Hello everyone, you're here and today I'm gonna bring you a bit of an update. Uh, it's for Maya because so far we've only been able to use 2018 for like basically when it came out until now because Karen Gainer has updated the Write File Translator plugin which you need in, or in order to make any kind of custom skins in Maya for Maya 2023, which has been out for a while too now. There are, are a bunch of improvements and simplified things and just handy tools. For example, you can see that it can now load actual animations in Maya. And there's just a bunch of, like, as you can see, there are tons of new shelves, which I'm gonna go into a bit of depth with Maya in Maya later. There's the short installation tutorial, which is quite really quite short. So now you just want to go on releases, and there are also a bunch of new releases all of the time. Like he's updating it constantly, two days, four days, ten days, sixteen days. So he's also very open for any kind of like additional tools, improvements, etc. I'm just gonna download it, even though I already have it, so when you download it, you're just gonna unpack it. As you can see, it comes with those kind of folders, so you just wanna take those. Go into your documents folder, then in Maya, Maya2023, and just post them straight in. And there's no more to it, because it's all in those folders, and they're all just arranged there. So now let's actually start Maya 2023. 2023 is definitely easier to get than 2018 nowadays, and it definitely also improved over it. It might be a bit more stable even, and it's just nicer to use, so I would definitely recommend updating it because the plugin just works better than the old outdated one. And since it keeps getting improved, Proved it will stay that way for quite some time, for sure. So now we're in Maya 223. So, first of all, it looks basically a lot like the other one, except the little cube, which I actually quite like because you can like click on some of the views and then it just instantly puts you there. And here's the whole shell. So I'm just gonna go import the skin. So here you can see there are file types. And on the right you also have some extra settings. So I'm just gonna take Ari. No, actually not. I'm just going to take skin 27 for Ari. So here you have the option to also load the SKL and bind it as a skin cluster. This is important when you want to copy waves, but this was also possible in the older versions. It just works better here. And you can also import meshes separated by material. This is nice if you, for example, you need to get a better overview of all the materials. I can imagine that's really nice for Kane because Kane he doesn't have three separate models, he has all of the his three forms in one model actually and they're just overlapping directly with materials. So I'm just gonna click that and import that for now. So here we have Spirit Blossom Ari. And then in the outliner you can see she has all of those different models because otherwise you would have to like go by Hypershade, do the whole select object with material to separate them, but then they're still the same object. And that's a nice side effect of that is that, of course, um, the UV doesn't overlap, because otherwise your UV would look like that, which you can't really work with directly. <laughs> so yeah, now let's look a bit at the shelf. For example, you also have like some delete history, which you will need often or the unused noted hypershade, some namespaces which you need for copying weights, the grouping I actually don't use. That's actually pretty nice too. And then here's the 
UV to the marking, which is included, which lets you select the UV and put it in one of the four squares, which prevents you or like you don't makes you not have to edit the UV at all anymore if you only have four models originally. And then there's some bind poses stuff, freezing, joint poses, mirroring. There's the weight painting tool. And now this this I absolutely love because when you copy weights you often have the issue that you you get an error when you're exporting that you have more than four influences max and this one just prunes it and fixes the error for you completely. Now Tarangana said it might be a bit experimentational and you should be careful with it but for me it worked fine on my first attempt. But yeah, he included a lot of the tools, a lot of the things we use, we need often just in that shelf so you have everything you need quickly. And so far I ran into no issues whatsoever with the new plugin. Um, another thing I maybe should have done at the beginning, but oh well, um, is that if your plugin doesn't load, you need to go onto Windows Settings Preference Plugin Manager and just make sure it's loaded. But yeah, that's it for the video and a uh, huge shout out to Tarangana and thank you a lot for doing that because this plugin is awesome. It's so nice to work with it and I yeah, I hope you keep improving it and it I hope it keeps working. I hope we Yeah. Also another great thing is that you don't have to update the SKN anymore because like I don't even remember when it was, but there was an update which made you have to update the SKN every time you export it because it's outdated and only a tool could fix it and the plugin itself could not be updated and this basically makes it so you don't have to update it at all anymore and you can just directly use the SKN file again. And another thing is usually the old plugin would have had some issues with um, files like um, um ex the newer skins often come with some weird dots in their names, like the dot here in the before the pi, and the old Maya had some issues with that, and that also like fixed the issue and doesn't have any issues anymore because also if you, you can see. It's bound, it's moving properly, it fully works, and yeah. So yeah, that's it for the video. I was rambling a bit, I'm sorry, but yeah. If you're working with Maya, if you're making skins, I would highly recommend you to upgrade it, to download the program, and if there's anything you could thi you think that would be nice to have in the plugin as well, you can contact Tarangana on Discord. And maybe he will implement it, maybe you find some bugs that are still... But yeah, see ya guys!